series on this wonderful book. The Gospel of John has been described by some writers, not necessarily theologians, but some writers as the greatest work of literature in human history. The Gospel of John does more than tell a story. It provides truth. The Bible gives us, the Bible is a powerful book. The Bible says of itself, God says of His Word, it is living, it's alive, it's quick. It's quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. In other words, God said, my word speaks all the way to the heart of the matter. So many of us are more content and concerned with dealing with peripheral issues and external uh, displays of Christianity rather than what God sees about us. I believe out of the right relationship with God, this Bible teaches us, out of the right relationship with God will come the right things in our life. You can never be for the Lord what you should be without the Lord's help. And the Gospel of John is given to us, as a matter of fact, we often say to folks who just become Christians, who are just newly saved, we often say to them, listen, begin with reading the Gospel of John. I believe the Gospel of John is more than just a story. As I've said, it is truth. But it is the truth about Jesus. We said last week as we began this series, uh, this time that we are going to spend together, that everything that we believe about Jesus, we find in the Gospel of John. Everything we believe about the Lord begins with where John begins in the beginning. We began last week and we dealt with the subject of Jesus Christ, the beginning. And I emphasize this thought that everything must begin and end with Jesus. As a matter of fact, you'll find this morning as we take the time to study and look into the Word of God that there is no life without Jesus. Look with me if you would please in John chapter number 1 and we'll begin reading in verse number 1. The Bible says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. The Bible tells us there was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came, to bear, came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not the light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came into his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. The Bible says in verse number 14, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory is the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Lord, I pray that you'd help me this morning as I preach. God, I pray that you would give me the words to say and the strength to say them. May the spirit of this meeting be exactly what you want it to be. God, may you speak to the hearts of your people. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to draw your attention, if you would please, back to one verse in the beginning of the chapter, verse number 5, where the Bible tells us, And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. We live in a world today that doesn't know much about the light of Jesus Christ. We live in a world that doesn't live much by the light that Jesus Christ shines. We live in a world, if we're not careful, the issues of the culture can become the issues of the church. Can I tell you, there are many cultural issues that are good things, but they are not the best thing. There are many cultural issues that we are facing today that are being promoted 
I believe, by an agenda, if you will. They're being promoted by an agenda, and that agenda is anti-God. The message this morning is not on the culture and its agenda, but I believe it's high time, just pause for a moment, I believe it's high time that God's people get their head out of the sand and understand that ultimately that is not this side or that side, it's not this issue or that issue, it is the darkness that is against God. See, the problem in our culture today is that we do not want to define what is right and wrong. And and if you will, this is just a little parenthesis in the message. We're going to go back to what I want to preach in just a moment. But I want to encourage God's people. Listen to me. We are are dealing with many cultural issues. We're dealing with many things that are being promoted and pushed and and placed before us, if you will. And, And the issue is not the issues. The issue is that the issue of our culture contradicts truth. I said in the Sunday school class this morning, there are many issues that are being propagated and promoted. And to be honest with you, I think they're just, they are a means to an end. The social injustice issues. Can I tell you the social injustice issue is not the church's issue. You say, why? Because the church can't fix social injustice. Somebody says racism is a church issue. No, that's not the church issue. Why? Because the thing that solves the issue of race or the same thing that solves the issue of social injustice or the thing that solves the issue of whatever issue is being promoted at that time is the gospel of Jesus Christ. You see, the church's issue is the gospel. The only thing we have to stand on is the word of God. You say, how are we going to fix the problem? How are we going to fix the people? How are we going to fix the issue? I'll tell you how. Get the gospel before them. Preach the gospel to them. Share the gospel with them. Stand for the gospel because it is Jesus Christ that does the work in the hearts of men and women, boys and girls. The only hope and help for our nation is Jesus And the church has become dangerously comfortable with making issues the message rather than the gospel the message. It's amazing to me how quickly we can jump on board with a social issue, but yet it takes takes a doctor pulling teeth to get somebody on board with a gospel issue. Amen. Amen. I feel like we need to park for just a moment. I, I, I think I'm in drive and I need to put it in reverse. Well, we'll wear the shirts and we'll jump on board. And we'll wave the flags and we'll hold hands and we'll march and hold signs. But when it comes to sharing the gospel, you'd think somebody asked us to cut our right arm off. The church must get back. Anything that we substitute for God becomes idolatry in our life. The church must get back. Let me be very personal. Christians must get back to to, to the place where we understand there is a greater issue than the issues of our culture. And that is the issue of eternity. Does a man know Jesus Christ? Does a woman know Jesus Christ? I'm thankful we we have a church here that anybody who so desires can walk in those back doors for the right reason and sit down and hear the gospel message. But I'm not going to tell them how to be a better citizen. I'm not going to tell them how to be a better uh, 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 social uh, agenda uh, pleaser. I'm not going to tell them how to be a better person. I'm going to tell them the gospel because it is the gospel that will change the hearts and lives of men. Women, boys, and girls, it's the gospel that changed your life. We've become so kumbaya and everybody ooey gooey feel good about everything. The Christian life is not based on feeling. I I mentioned this last week and by way of introduction this morning, I want to begin here. When we begin to be moved by feeling, we substitute it for our faith. When we begin to be moved by feeling, have you ever wondered why we respond when the Holy Spirit of God speaks to us about the issue in our heart, the sin in our heart, the, the, the area in our life where we need to correct it. Have you ever wondered why our response to that always begins with, well, I feel like. You know why? Because our feelings don't always line up with God's truth. And rather than operating based on feeling, which is what churches do who take up social issues before they take up gospel issues, Rather than operating on the feeling, I just feel like we've mistreated people. I feel like we, I feel like, I feel, move feelings out of the way. 
and operate on faith in Jesus Christ. Operate based on truth. Now, don't, don't go out of here and say that pastor doesn't care about these issues. I do care. But I care more about a man's eternity. We operate on feeling. The culture has said, and by the way, it's amazing how people who feel one way one day will feel another way the next day. Our feelings change. Our feelings and our ideas and opinions change. And by the way, the, the culture, the, the agenda is not to appeal just to, just to control your feelings or to, to control what you feel. The issue in the agenda is they want complete control. We're living in a culture that is designed that, that there has to be, you see, for God to be to, 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 to move out of the way, to, for, for God to be substituted for, there has to be someone or something to take its place. The issue is control. Who's going to be in control? And Jesus says to us here in verse, or God says to us in verse number five, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. We are living in a culture, as I said just a moment ago, that has nothing to do or wants nothing to do with the light that shines forth from Jesus Christ. The true issue is the anti-God issue. And John reminds the Christian here, and I said all of that not to make that the gist of the message, but I said all that to say, I understand the world we're living in, and I understand the mistakes and the directions that people are going. And by the way, I believe the, the, the deception that comes, that, that people are being deceived with, I'm talking about good people, people who have honest, pure motives, they're being deceived as this is the issue. No, the issue is what will you do with Jesus? And God's people need men of God who will stand up and call the church back to Jesus. Call the church back to Jesus. We need to be where we, where we should be with the Lord. We need to be right with the Lord. We need to be right before the Lord. Our first goal should be to be pleasing to Him first and foremost. Stop for just a moment. Did you, did you see? Did you see a year and a half ago how quickly individuals said, this is what you have to do? And everybody just went. How is it that we can be more yielded to men than we are to God? I'm not saying don't do the right thing. I'm saying, why don't we respond to God that way? Why is it that we're not so willing and so, so yielded and so easily conformed? And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I'm just begging and pleading with God's people. Let's get back to the place where we at least give Jesus the same opportunity that we give everything else in our life. And God says here in John chapter, He said the darkness comprehended. Listen, this world is never going to understand Jesus. The gospel doesn't make sense. But as we look at John here and we understand, as we said last week, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God and the Word was God. Why start in John 1? Why, why Christian? Why go back to the beginning? Because there is times in every one of our life where we need to be recalibrated. I know what it's like. You know what it's like to try to to live in a world today that is anti-God. It seems like over and over and over again, you're being, something's being shoved in your face. And listen, I could go through this morning just the list of things that I received this week that's taking place in the culture. I could go through them this morning and you could leave here with what in the world are we living in? But there's something bigger than that. There's something more important than that. I said to our class this morning, or the class that I was teaching this morning, I said, do you know who the people are who are flipping out in our world today? They're the people who don't understand who God is. They're the people who place more trust and more confidence in a doctor who's changed his mind more times than I can count. They're the people who put more trust and confidence and faith in that than they do the God that said, 
that never changes. The God that said, let the world be, and it was. Jesus Christ, number one, write it down please, is eternal. Jesus Christ is eternal. Take your Bibles and look over with me, if you would please, to the book of Proverbs. I want you to listen to these words. Everybody still with me? Amen. Amen. Proverbs, look in Proverbs, if you would please. And beginning verse number 22, Proverbs chapter number 8, verse number 22. Proverbs chapter 8, verse number 22. If you're there, say amen. 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 The Lord possessed me in the beginning of His way. Before His works of old. I was set up, look please, verse 23, from everlasting. From the beginning or ever the earth was. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains abounding with water. Before the mountains were settled, before the hills, I brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world, when he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he set a compass upon the face of the depth, when he established the clouds above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep, when he gave to the sea his decree that the water should not pass his commandment, when he appointed the foundations of the earth, then I was by him. As one brought up with him, I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him. The Bible tells us in John chapter number 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. You say, well, Pastor Brian, aren't you thankful that God said his word shall not pass away? And I say amen to that. But I want you to look down in verse number 14. The Bible says here, who was the word? It was Jesus. The Bible says in the beginning was the word, but skip to verse 14. And the word was made flesh. And dwelt among us. We've been given the word of God. But I want you to understand something. God's word always has been. God's word has from the beginning. Hebrews eleven six 6 says. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to him must believe that he is. Do you understand that there will never be a time when God isn't. There will never be a time when God isn't. You must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. He always has been and He always will be. There there was nobody before Him and there, there will be nobody after Him. Job said in John 36, 26, Neither can the number of His years be searched out. Can I tell you, before the foundations of the world, Jesus Christ was. Before the foundations of this world that we live in, listen to me, that, that men have over and over again tried to disprove the biblical account of creation. That world that we live in, that was spoken into existence by God, Jesus Christ was. He's eternal. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Psalm 90 verse 2 says, Before the mountains were brought forth, and ever, forever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. He always has been. You say, where does Jesus begin? Can I tell you, He did not begin in a stall in Bethlehem. Long before then, the Son observed the Father. Stood in the presence of God. Was made flesh and took upon Himself the form of a servant. And came to this earth that we might have eternal life. You see, when you you talk to your children, when you talk to your families, Daddy, when when you recognize what's going on, you have to understand that before all of this was, Jesus was. I'm not talking to you about a man that just that just lived 33 and a half years. I'm not talking to you about an individual who had a ministry of three and a half years on this earth and and died on a cross and rose from the dead and and now sits at the right hand of the throne of God as, as if it were some story that has an ending. You see, when you speak of Jesus, you need to understand He always has been. Before the foundations of the world, the Bible said before you were formed, Jesus said, I knew you. He always has been. He is eternal. Secondly, I want you to see, not only is He eternal, but Jesus Christ is Creator. You say, why is that so important, Pastor Brian? The Bible says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God, and all things were made by Him. 
All things were made by Him. I find the emphasis this morning of creation not on the creation, but the Creator. So many of us have become so accustomed to worshiping creation that we forget the Creator. So many of us, and you say, well, Pastor Brian, I understand what you mean there, you know. You talk about doing this and doing this and this, this social issue and this agenda. No, 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 I understand. I'm talking about many people in the house of God who claim to be Christians begin to worship what God has created in their life rather than the one that created it. We become more comfortable with worshiping things than we do the one who gave us those things. We become more comfortable with worshiping what we have accomplished rather than what God has accomplished in our life. He says to us in, in John, he said, I want you to know, with the words of his lips, with the words of his lips, he created everything out of nothing. With the words of his lips, Brother Elmer, he created everything out of nothing. Do you understand the power that comes from the words of God? Have you thought about it? John and Genesis both begin the same way in the beginning. In Genesis, when God stepped down on nothing and made everything, Jesus was there. In Exodus, when God made a way out, when there was no way out, Jesus was there. When God brought forth water from a rock, when there was no water to drink, Jesus was there. When God brought down the walls of Jericho uh, because the people of God needed to go in, Jesus was there. When handfuls were left on purpose in Ruth, Jesus was there. When God delivered the message through the prophets, Jesus was there. The great shepherd, Jesus. The wisdom of the ages, that, that is Jesus. The faithful advocate, that is Jesus. When he taught us the meaning of life in the Old Testament there, that is Jesus. So when Jesus, the God-man, steps on the scene in the book of John, understand something. It was not a new work that had begun. It was the same work that had been being done all along. Jesus just continued that work because the Bible tells us what was done in the Old Testament. Jesus continued in the New Testament. The miracles that were accomplished in the Old Testament through the spoken Word of God were accomplished in the New Testament through the spoken Word of Jesus Christ. He was born of a virgin. He astonished the Pharisees. He fed the hungry. He spoke with authority. He touched the weak. He gave the sight blind. He raised the dead. He brought Lazarus forth. He walked on water. He washed sinners' feet. He died on a cross. He took death, hell, and the grave and the keys to them all when He died at Calvary, was buried and rose again. And my friend, He sits at the right hand of the throne of God. Why? Because the spoken Word of God made a difference in the days that have gone by, in the days of our life, and in the days that will come. Because I would say to you, my friend, that while we don't see Jesus walking on the face of this earth, I can tell you that I know He's here because he lives inside of me. And we may not hear Jesus speak audibly, but I want you to say He has spoken to us. And there is power in the words of God. Listen to me. It is God that created the life that you have been given with His words. Pastor Brian, the life that I've been given is challenging. The life that I've been given has taken me through difficult moments. The life that I've been given has, has seen many dark days. Yes, but you're sitting here on the other side of those dark days because of the spoken word of God. Listen to me, the same power that was held in the words of God when he stepped out on nothing and made everything are the same, is the same power that sits in our lap this morning as God speaks to us. It is God that will change your life. You say, Pastor, how do I start over? You start over. By being a new creature. A new creation. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. He's creator. Someone tells you this morning that, well, God spoke to me. People come to me sometimes and they want to convince me that God spoke to them about something. 
Well, mark this down. Please don't forget it. Whatever God speaks to you about today, He's already spoken about in His Word. Can I say that again? I want you to get it. What God speaks to you about today, He's already spoken of in His Word. There's no new revelation from God. Somebody says, I got a new word from the Lord. Turn the TV off. I got a new word from the Lord. Don't buy the handkerchief. There's no new word from God. There's just His word. And in the power of the words of God, you can find everything that is necessary to begin. How do I start living? You go back to the beginning. How do I start living? you got to begin where Jesus began. You know what we are without Jesus Christ? You know what we are without Jesus Christ? We're exactly what existed before God spoke the world into existence. We are nothing without Jesus Christ. But when we understand the power of God's Word, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. When we understand the power in the words of God, then God can make something of us. It all begins with Jesus. He's eternal. He's creator. Then lastly, I want you to see in John, look what the Bible says in John 1 again. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. And all things were made by Him. Without Him was not anything made that was made. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. Child of God, let me encourage you for a moment. Hit pause. Do you, do you think for one moment that God was caught off guard by a, a virus? And do you think for one moment that with, with the flick of His finger... God can do away with every struggle man's tried to create. You see, where does our joy come from? Listen, you turn on Fox News or listen to Patriot Radio or turn on whatever else radio station you like to listen to. And I don't care which one it is. You're not going to come away from there with life. As a matter of fact, you're probably going to come away with the life, the world's ending. Sell everything you've got because tomorrow's the last day. If that's where your focus is. And I'm not saying we stick our head in the sand and be ignorant. But what I am saying is let's at least give God the same opportunity. Amen. Amen? Amen. Hey, let's spend as much time reading God's word or praying or encouraging one another as we spend listening to them bunch of liars promote an agenda that's not going to help anybody. Amen. Amen. We're convicted. We don't say amen there because we're convicted because we got to know the next story. We got to know the next press release. We got to know what the CDC say. We got to know what the, 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 the uh, secretary of whatever's going on in Washington says. We got to know all of that. Let's take that time and say, God, help me to know you more. Yeah. Why? Because in him's life. He says, all things were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. Look in verse 4. In him was life. He's not only eternal, and He's not only creator, but He is life. How many of you in here, you can say with great joy this morning, I know Jesus Christ is my Savior. Would you say amen? amen. Do you know when your life began? The day Jesus found you. The day Jesus Christ made a difference in you. Because before then we were living for no one other than ourselves. The Bible says in Jesus was life. My, I wish I, wish I could get Chris, Christians. I wish myself oftentimes could grasp that, Brother Tim. We could, I could hold on to that truth or, or be reminded of that truth often that there is no life without Jesus. There is no life without Jesus. God cares about all men. Some people will say that the problems of our culture, the problems of our culture, turn the news on, and some people will say the problems of our culture are because of God. 
As a matter of fact, let's do everything we can to do away with everything God says is right. Let's do the best we can to remove everything that God has ordained. Let's do all we can to downplay and to get rid of every ounce of truth that comes from this God. The answer to all that is wrong in this world is Jesus. The answer to all that's going on in your life is Jesus. The struggle that you're dealing with, the battle that you're facing, the the battle that you're losing in this moment, and I don't know what it is, but the answer to that is Jesus. And God helped the church and God helped preachers to get back, despite what the culture may be saying, to get back to, uh, to, to get away from the place where we make issues the message. And understand that the only hope and the only help for this life that we are living is Jesus. Jesus Christ is life. So many are searching for an answer. Who do you believe? How many times in the last few months have we said to one another, Who do you know? Who do do we believe? I mean, I'm not, I'm not talking about just health. I'm talking about in our country. I'm talking about in our own lives. I'm just not certain what to do. We're living in a world that's gripped with fear. And the fear is the fear of the unknown. They're not certain who's telling the truth. They're not certain what side they should stand on. They're not certain with whom they should agree. power of fear has been used and cast forth and and propagated by a culture that now has us so gripped that we're sometimes paralyzed. Have you ever seen such a thing? When people are afraid to do anything. They're afraid to go anywhere. They're gripped with fear to the point They're paralyzed. They say the lion, when it hunts its prey, will stalk it. And it'll stalk for hours and wait for the right moment to pounce and to destroy its prey. But they say that the lion, just before it will pounce to the to take the life of whatever it's hunting, in the, in the moments, in the, the milliseconds before it, it leaps to, to take that, that whatever it may be that they're hunting, that just before they strike, they let out its, its greatest roar. And well, that roar paralyzes the prey it's so afraid. You know what the devil's doing right now? He's roaring. He's roaring and God's people have been so gripped by fear we're afraid to do anything. Preachers won't preach because they're afraid of being attacked by wokeism. They're afraid to speak the truth and they won't deal with anything but social issues issues for the sake of being criticized and saying you don't care. But can I go a step further and tell you that a preacher that will not preach the gospel truly doesn't care about the culture. A preacher who will substitute the only message that will give life is a preacher who does not care about the people he speaks to. Because it is not social issues and it is not the culture that will save you when you stand before God. It is the gospel. In Him was life. What do you do with Jesus? The power of His Word. Do you understand the power of God's Word brought the world to existence and the power of God's Word can save your eternal soul? God's Word has always been eternal. It always has been. If the world was created with the spoken Word, 
what can Jesus create in you with His Word? I'll tell you what He'll give you. Life. Find something worth living for and live it. Let me, let me be a little more plain. Find someone worth living for and live it. When you possess the eternal written Word of God, it can change your life. You're here this morning, you say, Pastor Brian, I don't know what it means to have eternal life. I don't know about this life. I'm not certain what, what life really is like. Can I tell you, it begins with Jesus. And if you'll give your life to Him, if you'll trust Him as Lord and Savior, you'll say, I, I'm not certain, will Jesus save me? For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. As a matter of fact, I believe this this morning. That God, before the foundations of the world began, designed a plan to bring you to this place today so you could hear, number one, that God loves you. Can you imagine going through all of that to bring you to a place where you understand God loves you, that He gave His only Son to die for you? And if you'll stop trusting everything else and trust Christ alone, He'll save you. He'll give you eternal life. And the Bible says, and you shall never perish. I give unto them eternal life. Jesus said it. He said, I give unto them eternal life. We'll read it later in John. And they shall never perish. Christian, you see the power in the word of God? I'm not going anywhere until Jesus is ready for me to. Nothing's going to happen that, that Jesus don't want to happen to me. Nothing's going to, I'm not going to go through anything that Jesus is not going to go through it with me. I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. And a Jesus <laughs> who was all the way back then can navigate anything man has to offer now. Because on the other side of whatever man throws at us, Jesus will be standing. And you know the wonderful thing about it? Is I'm attached to Him. I don't know about you, but that blesses my blesser. That's good for me. Because no matter what I go through or what I face or what I deal with, a God who always was is a God who will always be. A God who stepped out on nothing and spoke everything into existence will be standing at the end. And by the way, when you go to John chapter number 19, you can read it there. The Bible says, I behold, a man that sat upon a white horse. And the Bible says, written upon his tie was what? The Word of God. Friend, I'm glad that no matter what life has to throw at us, God always has been, God is, and God always will be. And as a child of God, I'm always attached to Daddy. Find some, someone worth living for. Lord, we love you this morning. Thank you for being good to us and for blessing us, for taking care of us and for meeting our needs, for being God. I pray that you would forgive us for so many times becoming controlled and consumed with a culture that is anti-God. And we begin to allow the culture to dictate what the church does. May the Lord help us to be strong in the Lord. To be faithful to your word. To be right with you. I pray, Lord, that you would work in this invitation time. That you would do what only you can. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. And 